ladies, also gentlemen, I'm not sexist. Anybody sure. who wants to, anybody who wants to watch the wrestling rundown can watch the wrestling rundown. And we appreciate it, all viewers. Um, yeah, welcome back. This is more of episode thirty-one. Uh, if you haven't been keeping track, uh, the Coltster here and uh, Hawk on this end. Tell the couch. Well, uh, doing indie news. Indie news. A great segment. Uh, where we talk about the guys who aren't WWE, who aren't Lucha Underground. These are the guys who don't get your weekly national television exposure so much. Uh, guys like Ring of Honor, Chikara, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, CZW, and more, and more, and more, and more. And more. And occasionally more. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have got the first news stories. I do. On the spot. I do. I got a couple little... Uh Indie news stuff, uh, kind of segue from the WWE stuff into the indie news real quick. Biff Busick uh, is actually going to be getting a WWE tryout here pretty soon. Uh, we just recently talked about Wuhan Nation getting a tryout. possibly getting a tri getting a tryout and possibly getting, getting signed. signed. So uh, Biff Busick is next. And added note: Gabe Sapolsky is pissed off that he he does not want to lose Biff Busick to the big WWE. company. Um, well, you know, Ben Music is a young, raw talent. Oh, for sure. And, uh, very moldable still at this stage of his career, and can definitely be a huge asset to whatever company can keep him around for any elongated period of time. I mean, we've seen, just in the recent, like, three or four months, him wrestling on Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, Evolve, Everything. Uh, Combat Zone Wrestling... Every freaking major promotion, basically, except for Ring of Honor. Yeah. You know? Uh, very, very busy guy. And, you know, if these things are true, you know, Wuhan Nation, if he's signing, because, you know, they're talking about they're still in talks of trying to work out the contract. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's a big Evolve, Dragon Gate USA, mainstay guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Biff Busick also, so, I mean, right now, I think Sapolsky's in that mindset that he's kind of in that zone of, uh, he could be losing two of his biggest players in one fell swoop. Yeah, and, I mean... With, I'd be nervous, too. And with, and with how talented both these guys are, that's a big shot to the, to the, uh, the indie talent. Um, speaking of big stars on the indies, uh, Jay Lethal, who we've seen on TNA... Uh, we've seen just about anywhere, is making big waves in ROH. He is officially the longest reigning ROH TV champion of all time. He has held it for a consecutive 288 days with 21 title defenses. Yeah. So, good on you, Jay Lethal, just proving the fact that you are one of That's the... That's almost a title defense for every... 10 days? Yeah, just about. That's that's impressive. That's close to yeah. That's like a title defense for every fifteen days. Nice. Screw the thirty day rule. Wrestle every two weeks. Yeah. And defend it. Good job. Lesnar still loses. We're not even gonna talk about that. And then in our final bit of news for uh, indie stuff, WrestleCon, which happens around yeah. around WrestleMania in the same area. Yeah, they always do the WrestleMania weekend, generally in the same city at a smaller venue. Yes. They've officially announced their main event for WrestleCon. It'll be the Hardy Boys, Matt and Jeff, taking on RVD and Sabu. Now, these two teams, we never saw face-off in WWE's ECW. We never saw in any incarnation of TNA or anything like that. The last time this match happened was in 1998, before the Hardys broke out and became one of the most Was popular. it ECW? Uh, I believe it was... It might have been ECW. I'm thinking it might have also been, because that's kind of the downhill of ECW, almost. Like, they're starting to, I don't know. When, well, when, 90, 98, when was they're the, still uh, strong. When was the invasion of Monday Night Raw? 96 or 97. Oh, okay. I, I kind of figured maybe it was it was in in about that time. They didn't specify when it happened. Yeah. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to do some research on that. But, yeah. 
This this match it hasn't might be happened. annotated at the bottom somewhere. Yeah, this match hasn't happened since 1998. Yeah, so and this is, hasn't happened in a long time. It's intense. Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, I'd like to say I would have rather seen this match ten years ago. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but it's still exciting. Um, we know that we know the RVD can still go. Yeah. We know Sabu has his moments. Jeff Hardy's actually looking really yeah. good now. That's the thing is like. Sabu and Van Dam are who I'm more worried about, uh, just because they're older. Oh yeah. Uh, Jeff and Matt still work on a very very consistent basis. Very true. Because they're, uh, they're 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 both uh, all they're both still with TNA. Yeah. So uh, is Matt still with TNA? Yep. Oh, all right. Uh, you know they both work on a consistent basis. You know on and off TV. Uh, Van Dam still does fairly regular uh, with his WWE spurts too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which he know. is currently in contracts with yeah. WB. Well, he's, you know, or, we, in wax between. on, wax on, wax off. Yeah. Uh, and you know, so I'm just thinking, you know, this I the match definitely would have been better ten years ago, but I'm still excited for it now. Yeah. But yeah, I th- I think it would be cool for a one off match for the main event of WrestleCon. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a cool match for you know wrestling fans of all kinds of ages to check out. So if you're going to be in the uh, San Jose, Santa Clara area, the end of March. Be sure to check is out. This, is this, is it uh, from House of Hardcore or Omega? Didn't or specify. Didn't specify? No. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. There, there, it was simply just announced as the main event. It wasn't really representing a company or anything like that. Uh, just for the wrestling fans who happen to be visiting WrestleCon the last week of March. Unfortunately, we won't be there. We will not. We, we'll be at we have, Access. Yes, we have a... We have a busy week that week. Uh, we'll be covering access. Yeah, Hall I have of a, Fame. I've actually, I've actually, WrestleMania I've actually got Monday some cool Raw. ideas that are, that we'll be uh, posting while we're down there. Uh, but that is it for my little bit of indie news. I'm gonna toss it over to Mr. Kevin Hawk, who has results for Evolve 36, 37, and CZW's To Live Is To Die. Yes. All right. So we had a very busy weekend uh, with these shows last weekend. Uh, yes. Because it was on the 9th of the 10th. Uh, Evolve 36. Um, the the match that was scheduled, Gargano versus uh, Caleb Conley, was canceled. Yeah, what and was it became, wrong with... I never found out. Hmm. I think there was some sort of double booking or something that was preventing him from working for Evolve specifically on this night. Oh, because nice. he would show up to be in the corner of his tag team partner the next night. Oh, okay. And Evolve 37. But uh, Gargano... Johnny Gargano would defeat Shane Strickland in a non-title match. Since Johnny Gargano is the Open the Freedom Gate champion. Ah, nice. Uh, they would wrestle in a non-title match. Um, I like Shane Strickland. Biff Busick defeated Trevor Lee. A.R. Fox and Uha Nation defeated the Bravado Brothers in a grudge match. Uh, Ricochet, Ricochet, defeated, Ricochet. Timothy, defeated Timothy Thatcher. Uh, Rich Swan, uh, who is the Full Impact Pro champion... Uh, defeated Anthony Nice in a two uh, two to one in their ten minute flash, uh, which is like a ten minute Iron Man match. That's so, that's intense. Trying to get as many falls as you can in ten minutes. Yeah, two falls to one. Rich one wins. And yeah, Drew Galloway versus Roderick Strong, their non title grudge match, because uh, Galloway is the Evolve champion. Uh, went to a no contest. I have a feeling this is setting up to a title match. Probably somewhere along the lines. Um, I want to see that. Galloway versus Strong. And the good. next day, we had Evolve 37 in Winter Park, Florida. Uh, Anthony Nice defeats Shane Strickland. Shane Strickland loses twice in a row. Not having a good weekend. Yeah. Uh, Timothy Thatcher uh, would make up for his first loss by defeating Roderick Strong via submission. Huh. Uh, Trevor Lee was awarded a win over AR Fox due to referee stoppage. Yeah. Um, um, we're I'll... thinking there's... A, AR Fox might have screwed his face up during this match. Yeah. Pretty uh, badly. Yeah, it's it's bad. Uh, from what I gathered from comments on the picture he posted on his Facebook, it looks like he went for a high fly move to the outside and hit his face on the hardwood floor on the outside, uh, broke two teeth in the back of his mouth, had a severe concussion, uh, just... Lacerated his lip. Yeah. Big split over the eye. It was, it was actually, it's actually right under the eyebrow. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's pretty gnarly. Uh, so he unfortunately won't be able to be in the latter match that we touted, uh, him versus Shinron that's coming up. 
Yeah. Uh, Shinron still doesn't have an opponent, as far as I'm aware. Who knows? Uh, so Maybe we'll find out by next week. So, get well soon, AR Fox. Hope everything heals up quick. Yeah. Uh, then we moved on. We had Biff Busick defeat Uha Nation. And then Drew Galloway defended the Evolve title in a successfully in a match against Ricochet. Nice. <coughs> and then we had a six-man tag team match, which seems to be the theme of this week. Yes. Uh, That's a six-man tag Main event. Team. Uh, Ronan, Johnny Gargano, Chuck Taylor, and Rich Swan versus the Bravado Brothers and Moose in a losing team must disband. And Ronan won. I yeah, we we were talking about this. I never knew that the Bravados and Moose were a contingent. Apparently they're a thing. It uh, were. Were a, a contingent and now they're not for the DG USA Evolve uh, stuff. Uh, and then we ha also had Combat Zone Wrestling Presents To Live Is To Die. Uh, these guys are putting on shows more and more frequently. Uh, also check their website uh, for results to the Dojo Wars, which is an almost Find weekly down there. almost weekly thing that they do with their uh, yeah, new, they got, they've got their one, newer uh, students and stuff like that. Yeah, they've got uh, coming up here pretty soon. But we had Speedball Mike Bailey uh, defeated Alex Colon in a one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, the Beaver Boys uh, versus Team Tremendous would end in a no contest. When, uh... No contest is all the rage. Another team would come in and, uh... They'd start using chairs. Great. And... What's they, it? What was it? I don't remember. Uh, but people... <laughs> someone came in the ring with a chair and started hitting everybody. Someone started swinging chairs. Yeah, and then Dick Justice tried to get away and he got hit by somebody else. Damn. Uh... Chris Dickinson defeated Dirty Bucks Belmar in a one-on-one -on -one match. That guy's weird. Uh... Alexander James came out to for an interview, and he's interrupted by Drew Gulak, who kicks the living shit out of him and beats him in an impromptu match. Thank you for that. Whoever wrote that, that was that was verbatim what you great. wrote. Basically, he specifically wanted to read what you wrote. Drew Gulak, who kicks the living shit out of him. That was great. Uh, the Nation of Intoxication would defeat the Genocide Junkies post-match, the Genocide, Genocide Junkies would implode. This is this is just... Matt Tremont and Stockade. This is a match full of people with problems. Yeah. Uh, the Stockade and Matt Tremont would start getting into it and make a challenge uh, to face each other at the 10-year anniversary, or the next anniversary show for CCW. Which I believe is 11. No, it, it's way more than that, because they hit the cage of death 16. Oh, that's true. It's going to be a big year for them. 18? I don't know. Who knows? I don't we'll know. Fi we'll find out when it's announced. Uh, Joe Gacy successfully defends the CCW Wired Championship against Jonathan Gresham. Ah. Uh, Post-match, Tim Doss would come out and basically say, hey, everyone here is going to be nice to you in front, but behind they're all waiting to stab your back to take your belt. I'm going to tell you face-to-face -face that I am going to take your belt for wrestling. Uh, That's an intense challenge. Yeah. They announced that uh, Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee will be in this year's Best of the Best tournament. So oh. them along with, uh, I think it was a Speedball Mike Bailey won the six-pack yes. challenge? Yes, Speedball Mike Bailey. Uh, then Ohio is for Killers would defeat the Body and the God to retain the CZW Tag Team Champions. Chips. And it was announced that next month they will be going two-on-two uh, two on two Against the Young Bucks. That's that. a match I'm excited for. It's going to be a Flippy Doodah match. <laughs> Lots I, think of that's, I think that's officially what they're titling it. Flippy Doodah match. That's what I'd name it. Uh, and we had a uh, Sozio trying to regain the CZW Championship unsuccessfully from Black G's, who retains uh, with a curb stomp with a chair to the chest of Sozio. Probably didn't feel very good. Um, and we got upcoming shows as well. We do indeed. We've got some stuff here at the end of the month and some new announcements for what's happening in February. Uh, I'm going to shoot it over to you okay. to tell us what's going to happen at this upcoming end of the month Ring of Honor TV taping. Yes. Uh, what's been announced so far? So... On January 24th, ROH is doing their, their new tapings at the 2300 Arena. Uh, and that's the ECW Arena. This is where we'll, this will feature the semifinals and finals of the Top Prospect Tournament. Uh, but we also have a bunch of other matches. Uh, what we previously announced, 
The Bullet Club, represented by the Young Bucks and AJ Styles, will be taking on ACH, Matt Seidel, and Cedric Alexander. I'm going to die of awesomeness when that match happens. That's going to be a great match. Uh, Bennett, Taven, and Maria Canellis will be taking on the Briscoes and ODB. We have a one-on-one match. Which now stands for Old Dirty Briscoe. Old Dirty Briscoe. Uh, we also have one-on-one. This should be a heavy, hit- heavy hitting match. We have Michael Elgin taking on Moose. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then we also have Tommaso Ciampa taking on Jimmy Jacobs. Mm. And then on Friday, January 30th in Dearborn, Michigan, we have a couple extra matches uh, signed up for this. This is where Alberto El Patron will be taking on ACH for the first time ever. We also have Jimmy Jacobs taking on Tadarius Thomas. Tommaso Ciampa taking on Tyson Ducks. Is that what it is? Dukes? Dukes. D-U-X? Tyson Dukes. Tyson Dukes. And then that Jay Briscoe has left an open contract for Nigel McGuinness to fill that spot and give him a ti- uh, give someone a title shot against Jay Briscoe wow. on the 30th. So Jay Briscoe doesn't even know who he's going against. Neither do we. But we'll find out one that day. That is it for ROH. Let's move on to what you got for us. Uh, before The day before the 24th TV tapings, on the 23rd, AAW presents Chaos Theory. Um, so we, I, we've already mentioned the show last week. Uh, and, uh, Kingston defends the AAW title against Josh Alexander, and then Dan Lawrence and Marcus Crane versus Ryan Boz and a partner of his choice for the tag titles, uh, and Davey Vega versus Lewis Linden, we've already announced last week. Uh, since then, we've added uh, Ethan Page is going to be taking on the returning DJZ, and the Hooligans versus Zero Gravity in a double dog collar chain match. And we also know that uh, Shannon Moore will be having a match yeah. as well. Shannon Moore makes his AAW debut. Very cool. Uh, and then the day after the TV tapings for Rainbow oh, on the 25th, on the 25th the in d- the same arena, yes, we're going to have Chikara presenting a new start. We've already had a couple of these matches announced last week, so we've got the full lineup right now. Uh, it- I'm pretty sure there's not going to be any more matches yeah, announced. We are there about- was one detail we're left waiting on. This is true. Uh... So, we're going to dive right into it. The Colony, uh, Soldier Ant, no, no, Worker Ant, and Fire Ant, and Silver Ant are going to be taking on the team of Soldier Ant, Pinky Sanchez, and Jakob Hammermeyer. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting dynamic. Yeah, Colony Six versus Tag. New, new BDK. BDK. Um, then we have a number one contenders match between Ophidian and Nokin. Where both these guys have two points, winner comes out three points, loser goes out with no points. So yeah, one of these guys is a future opponent for Icarus. Yeah, one of these guys is going to leave very happy. Or Chuck Taylor. Yeah, one of these guys is going to leave very happy. One of them is going to leave very upset. Yeah. Um, I'm going for Ophidian. We've already noted that uh, Ultra Menace Black will be going one on one with Juan Francisco de Coronado, and Eddie Kingston will be going against Kevin Condren. But we also now know that the Batiri will be going against Hollow Wicked and Frightmare in tag team action. Which should be interesting considering what we saw at the end of Tomorrow Never Dies. Yes. Or towards the end of Tomorrow Never Dies. And NRG, I want to say Race Jackson and Hype Rockwell, are going against the The, team of... The new uh, Coco Beware and Owen Hart. uh, Are going against the team of, uh, I think it's Arctic Rescue Ant and Orbit Adventure Ant, the Colony Extreme Force. Ah. Uh, two guys that no one really cares about because they're not in Missile Assault Ant. Yeah. Um, so, two tag team matches that are probably going to be pretty entertaining. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we have the Open Challenge from Sydney Vacabella, the Wrecking Crew, all five members, the Devastation Corporation, Jaka and Oleg, uh, versus any five people who want to step up to the challenge. The first spot on the opposing team has been filled. The vacancy was answered by Dasher Hatfield. Uh, he's gonna have four partners. Who knows who they are? We don't know yet. They haven't been announced. I can uh, I can imagine Touchdown's gonna be one of them. That's the obvious choice. We have a lot of people clamoring to see Sugar Dunkerton back for this match. Yeah, uh, Sugar Dunkerton's been doing a lot of big things. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm, se- I'm seeing a lot of stuff from him, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, a lot That'd of people. So a lot cool. of a lot of people are clamoring for. Uh, I would love to see Sugar Dunkerton to come back and team with him and Mr. Touchdown. The throwbacks and 3.0. Yeah. That's what I want. Uh, 3.0 is another one name that a lot of people are throwing out there a lot. Uh, suspicious by their absence at Chikara's season finale. That's right. Uh, Ashley Remington doesn't have a match, so he's, his name is in the hat. Uh, 
Also, a lot of people are saying that they... The, the, uh, a new thing is a lot of people are saying that they want to see a new throwback. Oh. Uh, an addition. And right now, the popular consensus is a tennis player. <laughs> another person that I, w I could imagine would fill that, that single spot if they do add another tag team. Uh, Amasis. Yes. Amasis would be a good fit. Or the under Bryce. Ooh, that, that'd be an intense. Oh. He's undefeated so far. He is. We could have the Los Ice Cream to do it. Ew. Not that I think they would. Yeah. Marion Fontaine and Jervis Cottonbelly. I'd be okay with that. And uh, keep your eyes open on ProWrestlingTees.com. Jervis Cottonbelly is about to release a new t-shirt. Awesome. For the Musket Club. Awesome. Uh, we have all those matches and the Grand Championship match main event. Icarus defends against former partner Chuck Taylor. That's going to be good. Which would be a fantastic match. Uh, and then we have some shows coming up in February, some big ones. AIW presents I Choo Choo Choose You. Uh, <laughs> it's got a picture of a train on it. It has a little blue uh, train. And um, we've got three matches already announced. We've got uh, Kingston versus Ethan Page. Eddie Kingston and Ethan Page are going to be the tag team match, opposing each other with their dream partners that have yet to be announced. I like that idea. Yeah, um... At first, when I saw that they were mystery partners, I didn't read Dream Partners, so I immediately thought, oh, well, Kingston's going to bring in Homicide. Would make sense. But, you know, also, you could think, uh, you know, he also has history with Joker and Black G's. Ooh. Could be bring in some form of Blackout reunion. That'd be cool. Uh, he has teamed in the past with his mentor, Tommy Dreamer. Yeah. You know? The Who Yonkers knows? boys. Yeah, and Ethan Page, uh... I was thinking, could bring in his his tag team partner, Josh Alexander. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if they're, that would be considered a dream partners thing. Uh, but, you know, I'm interested to see who they're going to choose. We also have uh, signed Colt Cabana one-on-one -on -one against Chris Saban, uh, which should be entertaining. And the I like absolute, the idea of that match. The absolute title is on the line. Tim Donst defends against Ricky Shane Page. Very nice. Uh... And then PWG has just announced that they are going to return on the 27th of February. Uh, the, title, the show has not been titled yet, but we know that the PWG title is going to be on the line. The newly crowned champion, Roderick Strong, defends against Trevor Lee. Uh, we know, here's the match that is on your brain, apparently. Brian Cage and Uha Nation will go against the Young Bucks in the battle I call Big Flippy versus Little Flippies. <laughs> uh, That's the technical term. Yes. Speedball Mike Bailey will be making his PWG debut going against Biff Busick. Uh, Drew Gulak returns to PWG after an absence to face Chris Hero. Also, that we know the Monster Mafia of Ethan Page and Josh Alexander will be making their debut. And Alex Reynolds and John Silver, the Beaver Boys, will be making their debut. So two teams from the other side of the country, basically. Two, uh, you know, a Midwest team and an East Coast team will all both be making their debut in CZW, I mean in PWG, uh, for this show, and then we have Cedric Alexander versus Tommaso Ciampa also announced, so we have some pretty good matches announced so far, and I'm going to be interested to see, maybe the Monster Mafia and the Beaver Boys will actually debut against each other, Ooh. that'd be an interesting way to pit it, yeah, two brand you new know. teams facing off against each other, also, I mean, you could have the world's cutest tag team somewhere against one of these teams, Defending the belt. Defending the saddle, yep. uh, Super Smash Brothers are not strangers to PWG. Uh, the Rock Nest Monsters. There's a lot of different teams in PWG who are waiting in the wings to uh, maybe take a shot at these new debuting teams. Now, did you happen to see any information on the other AIW show coming up called uh, Make Em Say Uh? No. That is a new show coming up. The one thing I do know about that show is Mickey James will be making her debut in AIW. Really? Yes. Huh. Didn't see that. So That's we'll, pretty neat. We'll be sure to cover that one next week. Yeah. Um, that's all. what we got for upcoming shows. We know there are a lot more. Uh, a lot of stuff going down. Absolutely. Um, we'll be back with some more stuff next week. Some results next week. Uh, some things are going down. Uh, I'm announcing right now officially a contest. If you're watching this, you might have noticed that the amount of individuals gracing our table has been multiplying. Uh, like I said, last, uh, on Monday's Raw review, 
Yes. I think I said that we're ha I'm having a little Royal Rumble uh, yeah. that uh, Luke Harper, Undertaker, and Christopher Daniels were the first three entrants. That's a hint. Uh, so, when we get down to the Royal Rumble prediction video Which next week... next weekend, just before the Royal Rumble happens. All 30 members of this Royal Rumble will be gracing the table. If on that video you can name all 30 wrestlers in the comments, I'll send you a prize. I'll reveal the prize next week. What? what? But uh, that is it for indie news. Lots of stuff going on. Starting the year off right. Lots of mm -hmm. big stuff going on in the world of independent wrestling. Uh, like you said, we'll be having more upcoming events, more results, uh, more news next week. Uh, Five matches not to miss comes back. Oh! Where are we getting them from? Do you know? Mm, just rumors right now. Ooh. I like rumors. Rumors are good. Yeah. The uh, general consensus right now is saying combat zone wrestling. Ooh, that's scary. Uh, so yeah, look, look forward to or not look forward to the uh, destruction that could be coming your way next week in five matches not to miss. But we will uh, we'll be moving on. We've got a few more videos coming. All of our videos over in the playlist there. All of them. Uh, we've got a Raw review, Midweek, Fantasy Warfare, Smackdown Rundown. You can re-watch the indie news if you so please. Like this video. Like this video. Be sure to check down in the description. Uh, you'll find all of our information where you can follow us, like, favorite, subscribe. You Tweet can, me. You can check out all of the Tweet news me. sites, uh, Facebooks. Uh, we'll be po posting Twitters and stuff here pretty soon, compiling a list of all of our favorite ones. Uh, so you can follow all of them, find out when these shows are happening, Show, find out how you can get to these shows if they're around you in yeah. any time. But that is it for this week's Indie News, and we will see you Next at a video. video. Well, we actually see it. We keep it. I always see them. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what your guys' problem is. I think that there's actually something wrong with you. You just referred to me as you guys. Well, your beard is connected to Thomas. Mm. No? Yeah. No, no, think so. I don't think so. All right. Well, he'll see you guys later. I'll see all my friends later. You have one.